Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem rotate array. We are given an array and we want to rotate the array by k steps where k is always going to be a non-negative integer. So what exactly does rotate mean? Well, take a look at this first example. We are given an array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and we want to rotate it by 3. So what does that mean? Well, it basically means we're going to take every single element in the array, shift it to the right by 1 or in other words, shift it to the right by k times. We're gonna shift it by one k times, but what happens to the rightmost element such as this one? We can't really shift it to the right because there's no space. So if we do that, we're basically looping it all the way around back to the beginning. Now, if we ended up doing that three times, you can see that this seven would actually wind up in the third position. And the four here, which started at this position, is gonna be shifted to the right three times. So it's gonna end up in this position and that's what you can see is true in the output. So there are many ways to solve this problem. One of the simple ways is gonna be an O of N time and space solution. But the way they want us to do this problem is to modify the array in place. We can still do that with an O of N time and space solution, but there happens to be an even more optimal way. Linear time, but we can actually do this without using extra space with O of one memory. So I'm gonna be showing you both of the solutions. I'll admit that this solution, the constant memory solution is definitely kind of tricky to come up with. So the simple way is yes to use an extra output array and then we can take this new array and then copy it back into the input array because we want to update this array in place. But so yes the simple way is let's just go through every single element such as the first one shift it by k, uh, k spaces right k is 2 in this case so we're going to take this 1 it would be here but we're going to shift it by 2 so we're going to end up putting the 1 over here. So we've done that next do the same thing with the 2 put it two places so it's going to be over here same thing with the three shifted by two spaces it's going to be over here now we get to the interesting case four right now when we were doing these previous ones it was simple right for example let's say the index was over here at this first position the target position that's going to be at is just going to be i plus two that's really simple but where two obviously comes from k but from here it's a little bit more difficult if we say i plus two it, we're going to end up over here in this position right when in reality what we want to do is put it in the first position right and similarly for this five if we shift it by two we're going to end up over here like in the second position out of bounds but in reality we want to put it over here a good way a clean and easy way to get around this math is basically take i plus two since this value could be out of bounds it could be greater than you know the length of this array we want to take this mod it by the length of the input nums right so if we take i plus 2 i plus k mod it by the length of nums it's always going to work so if we did 4 right this index which is 3 plus 2 is going to give us index 5 over here modded by the length which is also 5 then we're going to get 5 modded by 5 which is going to be equal to 0 which is going to put us in this position the zeroth index which is exactly what we wanted to do right so the math works out in this case so when we want to know where to put 4 we can put the 4 over here similarly with 5 we can put 5 plus the index of this is 4 4 plus 2 modded by 5 is going to be index 1 which is over here so the 5 is going to go over here that was really easy so then we can just take this uh, output array copy it into this one and then that will be the entire result now i'll admit that this next solution i'm going to show you which is the o of one memory solution is a little bit tricky but i'll give you a quick hint and honestly with the hint i bet you could probably figure it out so notice how when we rotate this array we really have two portions we have this portion which is going to be shifted to the end of the array and then we have the last k elements right this size of two which is equal to k which is going to be shifted all the way around into a loop so that it's going to be at the beginning of the array right let me just show you something what would happen if we took this entire input array and reversed it let me just do that and then once you look at that you'll probably be able to figure out what to do but if not i'll explain it anyway let's reverse this array okay so i took this entire array and 
reversed it over here. Do you notice anything about this array? First of all, is this the array that we're looking for? Is this the rotated array? It's definitely not, right? It's not the rotated array because we would want this four and five to be in the correct order, right? In the same order, but it's not in the same order. And see these values, one, two, three, we would want them to be in the same order over here, but they're not in the same order. But what can we do to this array, which is just the reverse of the input array, what can we do to this array to get it in the rotated format that we want? Well, we just took the entire array, reversed it. So how about we take the first K elements of the array, this portion, reverse that, and we take the remaining portion of the array and reverse that as well. What's going to happen if we do that? Reverse this, we get four, five. Reverse this, we get one, two, three. Is this the rotated array that we were looking for? Yes, it's exactly what we were looking for. Is that obvious to come up with? Not in my opinion, but once you reverse the input array, you can kind of see the remaining stuff that we have to do is kind of a little bit obvious, at least when you kind of draw it out. So basically what we did is reverse the input array, then reverse the first K elements, then reverse the remaining portion. So we did a few reversals, three different reversals, but then we get into the format that we wanted and we didn't use any extra memory to do this. Even though I drew an extra array, we could have done all of this in place. Reversing is something that can be done in place with no extra memory. So with that being said, we can jump into the code now. Okay, so now let's get into the code and I'll be honest, it's gonna be pretty simple once you kind of know the whole reversal explanation. One thing I want to mention though is we're going to take k and mod it by the length of the entire input. Why are we doing that? Because technically k could be greater than the entire length of the array. So if the if k was the exact length of the input array, then we're basically rotating the entire array as zero times, right? If we have an input array of length four and we're doing four rotations, we're not really changing the array at all. So uh, and if k is greater than the length of the array, we want to mod it by the length. First, we're going to reverse the entire array. So I'm going to initialize our left and right pointers to the beginning and the end of the input array nums. And then to do the reversal, it's pretty straightforward. While the pointers have not met each other or passed each other, we're going to basically swap the elements in Python. You can do it pretty easily like this. We're just swapping the left and right elements in place. We don't really need a temporary variable in Python. And then we're going to increment the pointer. So left is going to be incremented by one and right is going to be decremented by one. And so that's pretty straightforward. And remember, the next thing we want to do is reverse the first K elements and then reverse the remaining portion of the array. Now you're going to notice I'm literally just going to copy and paste to do this. But since we're noticing we're copy and pasting, you could put this in a helper function if you wanted and then just call the helper function three times. Uh, updating the boundaries that we're trying to reverse from if you want to shorten the code. And I think that'll be pretty easy for you to figure out on your own. So the first thing we want to do now is reverse the first K element. So from index zero all the way to K minus one, we want to, we want to reverse these elements. We do that with the exact same while loop. And then once again, we're going to do another reversal. This time we're going to do the remaining portion. So we just did from zero to K minus one. Let's do the remaining portion from k until the end of the array and you know that's all we really are updating so you can kind of guess how this helper function is going to be structured just passing in two different values for left and right so that is the entire code as you can see it works and is pretty efficient so i hope that this was helpful if it was please like and subscribe it supports the channel a lot and i'll hopefully see you pretty soon thanks for watching